Well, for more on this, let's check in with John Blacksland. He's the head of the Strategic Defence Studies Centre at the Australian National University. He joins me now live from Canberra. John, always great to see you. Thanks so much for your time this afternoon. Uh, Defence Thanks, Minister Maurice you. Payne was saying there that this decision is in line with, to, to strategic objectives. Is that how you interpret this? Look, uh, she's putting a positive spin on what is an understandable response to American pressure. The United States needs uh, its allies to pony up. Uh, it doesn't seem to have a very compelling new game plan for addressing the fundamental problems in Afghanistan, except to pile on more training, advising and assisting functions. Now, the problem, of course, is that uh, inside Afghanistan, Throwing more military resources at the problem is, uh, you know, it's not really going to change the game very much. It, it'll probably help sustain the current uh, status quo. Uh, but the fundamental issues that are at stake in Afghanistan revolve around corruption, around opium and around the Taliban, which operate pretty much uh, with impunity across the border inside Pakistan. That means that while our training, advising and assisting mission uh, will go on and no doubt will make a relatively positive contribution, an extremely professional contribution, I might add, uh, it's in the context of a game plan that is really falling far short. It's for, been falling short for 16 years uh, and essentially it's more of the same. And it's happening <clears throat> at the time, whereas uh, the Minister, Defence Minister Maurice Payne made the point there, there are other regional priorities. So it's fair enough that we, we, we respond. There's, it's hard to avoid that pressure from mm. the United States to do something. And it's fair enough that it's in the same lane that we're already going down. 30 extra people, that's 300 total, that we're essentially rotation-wise, we're talking about to do to maintain a rotation of 300, you're really talking about 1,000 people. 1,000 people in Afghanistan, that's apart from the ones in Iraq. Now, you know, ones and twosies, uh, you add a few here and add a few there, so suddenly you're talking about a serious number of people involved in the Middle East for a campaign in which we really haven't had a very strong role in driving the strategy and at the same time as challenges in our own neighbourhood in Southeast Asia are growing. Well, like you say, it's difficult to sort of say no to a request when it comes from, from so up high, but from what it sounds like, John, it seems like this is sort of a Band-Aid solution and the actual issue, the core issue, isn't necessarily being addressed and that strategy isn't being looked at. Yeah, well, part of the problem here is that Australia hasn't invested all that heavily in the strategy. And that's because this is for Australia essentially, uh, you know, a war of choice. It's, it's one where we're making a contribution because it's a good thing to do. We, we don't want Al-Qaeda to return. We don't want Taliban to come out on top in Afghanistan. But we know that they're operating already in Pakistan. Uh, and we're really not doing all that much to constrain them there. Uh, so it's going to per perpetuate a regime, a situation that, yes, it's probably better than the alternative, uh, but we really are sh falling short in terms of a strategy. And that's not something that Australia has really bought into, partly because it's not our main focus. Our main focus, as the Defence Minister made the point there, remains on Southeast Asia and the Pacific. That's, that's where, we're, you know, if there's a serious problem emerge, that's where the ADF will be called on, the Australian Defence Force, will be called on as the principal security guarantor be it in, in Papua New Guinea, in the South Pacific, be it another crisis in East Timor, or heaven help us if Indonesia call on us to help in another crisis that might emerge there. As happens at short notice, you know, we, let's not forget, uh, while we, we're very, we try to be respectful of Indonesia, uh, Indonesia's actually called on us a couple of times, uh, particularly going back to the tsunami in Aceh in, uh, you know, a bit over a decade ago now, Australia actually has a responsibility to be poised to assist in our neighbourhood. And there are a spectrum of challenges that are very plausible and imminent in our neighbourhood, for which I know the, the Australian Defence Force is doing some preparation and planning. But really, when we've got so many other distractions, we're not doing it nearly as well as we should, I believe.
So is it wise then to pony up, as you said, John, you know, mm. uh, to some of these requests? And obviously, we, you know, this is our big alliance and it has to be done. But is there a point at which you say, look, you know what, these, these, these uh, strategy, this strategy we have in this region is more important? And also, is it wise to be ponying up when uh, there's not necessarily a very clear strategy from the White House in terms of how it's going to be approaching not only Afghanistan, but Iraq and all these other issues that, that in a sense, is kind of a bit wishy-washy at the moment. Mm. Yeah, well, look, a, a friend of mine who's just recently come back from Afghanistan said, look, it's like we're playing, uh, we're kicking goals in a game of cricket. Uh, and, well, you know, there's no point in kicking goals in cricket because the goal posts are irrelevant for the game of cricket. Uh, and, unfortunately, that's a bit of the, the situation we find ourselves in in, uh, in Afghanistan. Uh, but of course, there is an imperative for us to continue to support the United States. And this goes back to an age old phenomenon where we bank on supporting the United States where it asks us to, on the basic understanding that should there be, you know, crunch time come down the track, they will respond in kind. Uh, to a request from us. Uh, and they have done that uh, periodically in the past. You know, back in 1999 when the East Timor crisis happened, initially uh, US, the United States was very reluctant to support. Eventually they were persuaded because of the significance of the alliance. Uh, and uh, we talk about that in my book, East Timor Intervention, recently. But we've just concluded a conference on war in the sandpit, reflections on Australia's war in Iraq and Afghanistan. And what becomes very clear is that Australia's involvement there has been short-sighted. It's been about dealing with the next immediate objective without really having a visionary plan to engage constructively and to do something meaningfully for the long run in, in Afghanistan. Now, we've been at this training, advising and assisting function for a number of years. That is credible, it's creditable and it is commendable. Uh, but we need to be realistic about what the expectations are there. Unless the United States leads with a visionary strategy to deal with corruption, opium and Pakistan and the, 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 the safe havens for al-Qaeda and the Taliban in uh, Pakistan, then we're really, we're essentially sending our troops to go in there and continue, you know, kicking goals in a game of cricket, uh, or to use another metaphor, to tread water, uh, and not really make that much progress, but prevent things from getting worse. John Blackstone, always such a pleasure to have you on the program. Thanks so much for giving up some of your time for us this afternoon. Thank you, Kumi.